What's up? S-Man's back. Got another Q&A for Terrell. See if I can uh, stump him this time. I haven't yet, but I'm still working on it. I'm trying to get you guys those answers out there. So, got the man here himself. Pterodactyl. The all-wise and powerful Pterodactyl. Alright, so uh, let's see what the first question is I got here. <sighs> Why does my mower backfire when I shut it off? Hmm. Why does my mower backfire when I shut it off? Backfiring occurs because there is fumes, gas fumes, or raw gas getting into the hot muffler or muffkin. And when them fumes get into that muffkin, that hot muffkin will ignite those fumes and that's what creates the backfire. So you're having a running rich problem. We got too much gas getting in there. So you got a carburetor problem again. Now they do have what's called a gas shutoff solenoid or anti-backfire valve. That's that valve that's on the bottom of the carburetor float bowl that's got those wires running to it. It'll either have one or two wires running to it. And what that's supposed to do is, when you turn the key off, it cuts the power to that solenoid and that little plunger goes up to the center nozzle that's in the carburetor. So as the engine's winding down, when it's winding down when you shut it off, you know, it's not like your car, when you shut your car off, it just stops. Shut the lawnmower off, it's still spinning a little bit until it stops. And what's that, what that is doing is, it's still drawing in air. So when it's drawing in air, it's still pulling gas out of the float bowl and dumping it into the manifold, which is going to the head, to where the valves are and it, valves are still going up and down, pistons still going up and down, you just don't have any ignition, you have no spark. But all the gas fumes and mixture and everything is still going into the head and then getting pushed into the muffkin. And that's what creates that backfire when it hits that hot muffkin. So that's what the anti-backfire valve does. That plunger comes up and shuts any kind of gas from getting drawn up out of the carburetor to being carried through the manifold and into the intake valve and combustion chamber and getting dropped in the muffkin. Well, a lot of people go, Terrell, I got that anti-backfire valve on there and it's still, I still get a backfire. Well, then you got a, your engine is running rich. You're getting too much gas. So maybe your needle and seat is leaking a little bit. Maybe it's not sealing your needle and seat in the carburetor and you're getting a run rich condition or O-rings might be bad because some of these engines got jets that have O-rings on them and the O-rings shrink sometimes that fuel will run past that and you'll get a run rich condition. The way to tell if your engine's running correctly is by the spark plug. The spark plug tells the tale. You pull the plug out and look at the plug and if it's black, it's running rich. If it's white, it's running lean. If it's nice chocolate brown, it's running correctly. All right, so I hope that answers your question. So what if I just I, idle it down and then shut it off with that? That'll help because now you're not running it real fast, maximum RPM. You're not running at 3,600 RPM, you're idling it down to about 16 or 17 RPM, 100 RPM. So when you shut it off, lower RPM, it's not gonna spin as many revolutions to keep drawing that fuel through there. So yeah, you could just idle it down, and let it idle down for a few seconds and then shut it off, and that should help. If it's still backfiring when you do that, Again, you got a run rich condition. You're getting too much gas. Hope that answers your question. Next question to the almighty Tarot. All right, yeah, I answered some questions that I had. So, uh, what are some weed eaters or chainsaws that you prefer? Like, 
If I just go to Home Depot and get one, is that like better than going to like an actual mower shop or what? I don't know what to buy. Good question. It's always good to buy your lawn equipment from a servicing dealer. So that way, if you have any problems, you can take it back to that dealer because they're a servicing dealer, which means they service what they sell. Home Depot and Menards and Lowe's, they don't fix anything there. They're just a store, they just sell it to you. And then when you have a problem with it, they'll just tell you, okay, well, look in the phone book or go online and find a, a repair shop to take it to. And then the repair shop is usually gonna say, well, you didn't buy this here, you bought it at Sears or Home Depot. So my customers come first. So I'm gonna fix their stuff first and then when I get time, I'll look at your stuff. And then a lot of that stuff they sell at Home Depot and Menards, the cheaper stuff, is throwaway. I'm gonna take it to a dealer and he's gonna go, huh, what'd you pay for that weed eater, $79? I got a $80 an hour uh, labor rate and we charge a one hour minimum. So it's $80 plus parts to fix your weed eater. You wanna spend that money or you just wanna go buy a new one? That's why a lot of this handheld stuff is going battery powered. All you gotta do is make sure the battery's charged and that weed eater, chainsaw and leaf blower are gonna run. And they're quiet, there's no gas, no fumes. You know, it's going that way. I know a lot of y'all wanna fight it, but guess what? You're not gonna win, because they're all going that way. And the battery, Technology is getting better and better. Look at all these battery tools you got. You got a cordless drill or a cordless uh, uh, grinder, orange grinder. Why not have a cordless weed eater, you know, battery weed eater? Why not have a battery uh, chainsaw? I had a guy uh, actually today showed me a Makita chainsaw, a uh, 14-inch Makita chainsaw he had. He says he loves it. Brought it in to show me. Real lightweight, takes two batteries. Says I can cut a ton of wood with this thing. So yeah, that's with the weed eaters and stuff. But if I was gonna get one, it would be a brand name. I would get a brand name weed eater or chainsaw. I'd get an Echo or a Stilch, something like that. Because you know, those are you're gonna pay more, but they're made better. And then that way, if you do got to get it fixed, you know, you paid a lot of money for it, so it's going to be worth to put the money into it to get it fixed. But again, the problems I see with them, same problems I see with a lot of this stuff, gas. That's why it's better to get battery powered. There's no gas. You ain't got to worry about the battery going stale. It's going to go dead if you don't charge it up. But other than that, keep a battery tar charged. You know, you know, that weed eater and that leaf blower, they're always gonna start. That answer your question? Oh uh, yeah, I guess I'm gonna probably just get some battery power. Easier for me to use. That's right. All right, well, I got another question for you. Uh, all right, what now? What would cause my engine to lose spark or lose power when it gets hot? Let's see if you can find that answer out. Loss of power when it gets hot. Could be a couple of things. Could be the coil. That's why you gotta have troubleshooting test equipment. You gotta have a spark tester. Spark tester is a thing you gotta have, especially an inline spark tester where you can watch the spark as it's running. Or if you got a problem where it won't run when it gets hot, you shut it off and you go to start it again and it won't start, First thing we do here is we plug that spark tester in and see if it's got spark or if it's intermittent. If it's intermittent, but not sparking steady, you know, that's gonna cause a problem where it's not gonna restart. So a lot of times it's an ignition problem when it gets hot. The coil gets hot, loses spark, then when it cools down, it starts sparking again. Another reason you'll have hard starting when hot issues is the valves. Maybe it needs a valve job. You know, gotta remember physics. Things are cold, they contract. When they get hot, they expand. 
So you got an engine that when it gets hot and it won't start and it's got spark and it's getting gas, probably got a compression problem. Valves aren't sealing. When it gets hot, they're expanding. You're losing compression. Valves aren't sealing. And then when it cools down, everything's contracting, seals up again just enough to start. So those are two things you always look for when you got a hard starting hot problem. Ignition and compression. Third thing could be fuel, which could be something as simple as uh, the tank cap, gas cap not venting and letting the air in. You're using up that air in the tank and it's killing the motor, depending on how much fuel is in the tank. You know, if the, if the gas tank is full, you know, there's not a lot of air in there, so it may, it may, you know, run out of air faster. If it's only half full or quarter full, you got a lot of air in there. So it may take a long time before it uses up that air in the tank before it'll kill the motor and won't let it flow. So that's the third possible thing, is if you got spark and your compression's good and it still won't start when it's hot, you may have that issue where it's not venting properly, it's not letting it flow through. Or a bunch of crap. You gotta remember this too. You're opening that gas cap, you're filling it. Air's blowing, there's grass around it, a little bit falls in there, you know, and it may take 10 years. And then all of a sudden you get this accumulation of grass in the gas tank or crap. And then, you know, you got that little spot, the little inlet or outlet on the tank, now it's slowly getting built up with grass. And that acts like a filter. Because all of a sudden it's letting the, letting the gas go through and then you're running it and then it runs out of gas and then you wait a few minutes. Well, now the gas is slowly filtering through that clog in your gas tank and then it runs again. And it runs for another five or 10 minutes and then it shuts off again. Yeah, because there's probably a bunch of crap in your gas tank. So you got to think of that too. I see that a lot. All right, any more uh, questions there? Oh, I, I was thinking it was just like one cut and dry answer. Like, No, there's just, no cut and dry answer. Oh, okay. Well, this goes for my last question then. Can you fix my mower over the phone? Yeah, I get this a lot. People call and want me to fix their lawnmower over the phone. I have no idea what you did to that mower or what you tried to do to that mower. I can try you, try to help you the best I can, but without having that piece of equipment physically in front of me, I may not be able to help you fixing it. Again, I don't know what you did to it or tried to do to it to get it to run. That's why we do those lawnmower detective videos, because that's what you gotta be. You gotta be like a detective. If you sit and think and figure it out, you'll be able to fix it. That's how I fix everything. Once you know how it works, then you're able to figure it out. That's how you troubleshoot. You gotta know how it works. It's pretty basic. You gotta have fuel, you gotta have spark, and you gotta have compression. And now that I think about it, because somebody brought this up too, you gotta have timing. You also gotta have timing. So they used to say you have to have three things. Now you gotta have four. Because a lot of these electronic ignition uh, motors now, you know, with the old points, if your timing was off, it wouldn't spark. But now with electronic ignition, you can still have spark, you can still have compression, you can still be getting gas but it's not sparking at the right time. So now there's a fourth thing you gotta have, and that's timing. You gotta make sure the timing's on. You gotta make sure your valve timing's right. Maybe you, maybe it jumped a tooth or something. You know, your valve timing, that's not gonna start. You'll still have compression. Or maybe your ignition timing jumped. Maybe you shared the flywheel key. You didn't get that flywheel nut tight enough. You know, you were under there monkeying around. And you put it back on, and well, I thought I got it tight. Uh, well, you didn't get it tight enough. Take it back apart, all the key share. You were jacking around with it for, you know, two hours. It's usually something you did. If something worked before you did something to it, chances are what you did is the problem.
Any more questions, Slippers, for the great one? Oh, uh, well, I think that's about it for this time. So, I think I got a pretty good answers out of the, out of the tarot man himself. I don't know if he has anything to add. <laughs> no. Tune in again. We'll do another question and answer session here and answer more questions that Slippers is going to give to me because he got nothing but time on his hands. So he just sits at home and reads all the comments and stuff. Me, I'm busy. I'm working all the time. If I ain't sleeping, I'm working. I'm not sitting at home on a computer or watching TV. I'm doing something. I can't sit still. I'm fidgety. I'm fidgety. And there's your dinner. Woo! Point. <laughs>